Welcome to the 9th Heidelberg Laureate Forum. I'm Rachel Thomas. And I'm Marianne Freiberger. Finally, after two years of pandemic, the HLF can happen in person again. Around 200 young researchers have come from over 50 countries from around the world to meet laureates of some of the most prestigious prizes in math and computer science. Marianne and I are making a video diary while we're here to give you a look at life at the HLF. We'll talk to the laureates and to the speakers and most importantly to the young researchers. And as meeting and making connections is the most important part of the HLF, we'll be sure to give you a slice of the social life too. In today's video, we'll be talking to Beate Spiegel of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation and the Klaus Schirer Foundation, who founded and funds the HLF. We'll be speaking to Vicky Hansen, a researcher renowned for her work on human-centered computing, who's from the ACM, one of the organizations that awards the big prizes in computer science. We'll be talking to John Richards, who's a researcher working in fairness in machine learning. And John, Vicky and Beata all give us great advice on what it takes to get to the HLF as a young researcher and how to make the most of your week here. But now the countdown is running and the cameras are rolling because the opening ceremony is about to begin. So follow us to the HLF. We're here with Beate Spiegel, Chairperson of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation and Managing Director of the Klaus Chira Foundation, which funds the HLF. Beata, after two years of the pandemic, the HLF is finally back to normal and we're all here in person. Uh, what's, why is the personal interaction so important here at the HLF? We all know the famous conversation at the coffee machine that we sorely missed during the pandemic. And this where, is the place where we change ideas and a lot of new things could be invented there. Invented. <laughs> this can only pe happen when people actually meet in person. The exchange of ideas among the young scientists and between them and the laureates, of course, is the main purpose of the HLF. Now, the last time we saw each other was back in July at the International Congress of Mathematicians where the Fields Medals are awarded and the, some of the laureates of the Fields Medals attend here at the HLF. And this year was the first year that the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation and the Klaus Turer Foundation are funding the Fields Medals. What does it mean to the foundation to fund such a prize? When we first received the request, I must honestly say that I was somewhat surprised at first because I wasn't aware that the financial support was needed here. But we were very happy to do so because we want to honor the legacy of this prize. One where young, young, really young scientists may also get the recognition they deserve. And what's your advice to all the young researchers who are finally back here in person at the Heidelberg Laureate? I would say talk, talk, talk and overcome the shyness you might have. Present your ideas, get advice and learn from your experiences. The chance to meet these laureates will likely not come again as soon. Hello and welcome to the conference. 欢迎来到海德宝论坛. HLF, my name is HLF. Welcome to the HLF. I hope you enjoy the program. Okay, so I'm very happy to be here with Vicky Hansen, who among many other things is CEO and past president of the Association for Computing Machinery, the ACM. So Vicky, you are renowned for your work on um, human-centered computing. Could you tell us what that is? Human-computer interaction is a field where people are really interested in making sure how people and computers get along, how they work together. It's all about usability and usefulness of the computing systems. So my particular area is looking at accessibility. So I'm interested in people with disabilities and how to make sure that everything that we develop to be used on the computer is also usable by people with disabilities. And um, in terms of the usefulness aspect, I have done a lot of work with older adults and um, I've been doing it for about 30 years. So the ACM awards the Turing Prize and also the ACM Prizes in Computing. Uh, and laureates and winners of these prizes are also often and usually present here at the HLF. Could you tell us a little bit about those prizes? Well, the Turing Award is 
certainly ACM's best known award, um, often called the Nobel Prize of Computing. And it is given to people who are extraordinarily distinguished. These are people who have done, in particular, something that you would know them for. If you heard their names or heard, if you knew of the technology, you would say, oh yeah, that, that's really important in computing. And it's basically a lifetime achievement award for the work that they've done. Because you asked me about human-computer interaction. And we don't have any um, either Turing Award recipients or uh, prize in computing recipients who specifically say HCI is their major contribution. But it's interesting that many of them actually did come from those backgrounds. It was before, in general, HCI was known as a particular field. So, for example, Douglas Engelbart was very well known as, as an engineer, but he invented many of the things that became part of computing, such as the mouse, and he talked about collaborative work experiences, that kind of thing. Uh, there was also Alan Kay, who was a Turing laureate, and he took some of the ideas, took as a starting point the ideas that Douglas Engelbart had, and he elaborated on those, and he became what's called the father of the personal computer. Then, in particular, I'd like to mention um, Alan Newell, because he has, he's well known for working in artificial intelligence, but he was also very interested in psychology. And he, along with a couple of his collaborators, wrote a book called The Psychology of Human Computer Interaction. And that was really the start of what would be called the field of human computer interaction. And you, you mentioned the ACM Prize in Computing. That is for people who are maybe more in the mid part of their career. So they are doing very distinguished work. You would call them rising stars in the field, right? I'm thrilled that they're here because they're very good at talking with the younger people. About the younger people, what would you say to a young researcher what to do to get make the best out of this amazing week at the HLF? Talk to the laureates. Laureates who come here come here because they know that they're going to interact with students. That's the big attraction, okay? Yes, they like to talk to the other laureates, but they can talk to the other laureates at other times. But here they have the young students that they can talk to and influence, and they come here to very freely give of their time. So make sure you, you do that. I know it can be kind of intimidating to go up to someone who's so famous and ask them your question, but I can guarantee that you will be well received as a young student talking to one of the laureates. We're now talking to John Riches, who is Distinguished Research Scientist at IBM Research and who's been associated to the HLF for a long time, um, in particular reviewing the applications from young researchers for computer science. So, John, you also work on human-centered computing, which we, also, which we already talked to Vicky Hansen about earlier. And when we read about your work, we were struck by something that you're working on, which is about fairness and transparency and machine learning. So what is that about? Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, sure. It's um, an emerging field um, of great interest around the world, actually, because uh, you can start to see regulations first in the EU, but in Canada, the United States, and elsewhere that are beginning to drive requirements for testing of AI systems, okay? Um, it sounds like it might be an easy thing to do. It's not at all. Just to give you an example, uh, there are over 70, 70 metrics for quantifying the fairness of a decision of an AI system. How you pick the right one, how you combine that one with, say, privacy-related metrics, or adversarial robustness, which is uh, uh, an indicator of how well you resist attacks and so on. Because at the end of the day, people need to make a simple, seemingly simple decision. Is this AI system okay to deploy? So could you give us an example of an ap application where, these, where fairness is important? Oh, sure. Um, there are many. I think one where uh, you're starting to see the regulations actually making a very large difference is in the area of uh, uh, granting a loan, right? 
So there, it, it's very, very important that things that are extraneous to your creditworthiness, for example, gender, um, are simply not uh, affecting the outcome, okay? Another example where you wanna make sure that when you are evaluating candidates for a job, you're not, uh, your AI is not sensitive to things that it shouldn't be sensitive to. Again, gender, race, things like that. Now, you're very familiar with the HLF, um, especially because you, uh, you review some of the applications that come in from young researchers in computer science. And what do the reviewers and you look for in an application? What are the things that... Right. Some obvious things, creativity, most importantly, the ability to really ask a good question, because, I mean, I think we can all be trained in sort of the mechanics of research, but are you actually trying to answer a question that is interesting, that's potentially impactful? So that's what I look for most, I think. Um, and then secondarily, evidence of the ability to actually uh, come here and interact. Hello, what's your name and where do you come from? Hi, I'm Tobias and I come from Germany. Currently I'm in Austria. Mm -hmm. And what do you study and where? Um, so I'm currently doing a postdoc uh, at IST Austria um, in theoretical computer science, in particular probabilistic verification. And what are you looking forward to about the HLF? Uh, I guess the most is really, <laughs> it already happened, like these random encounters uh, with people that uh, surprisingly actually do something that is very related to what you're doing so I already met someone who is you know we could actually work together maybe so these things I guess I'm most looking most forward to and you know just witnessing like the lectures really I, I what, like to hear people speak about things they're passionate about. What's your name and where are you from? Hi I'm Tanya Sridhar I'm from India what are you looking forward to most about the HLF? Or maybe it's already happened. <laughs> it has already happened. I just danced with Vincent and uh, I'm, yeah, you can see it from my face. I'm so excited about it. But I'm really excited to meet other young researchers as well uh, for collaboration, connection, and probably uh, having a lot of fun. <laughs> We've really enjoyed catching up with old friends and meeting new ones on this first day of the 9th Heidelberg Laureate Forum. But the real fun starts tomorrow with lectures from laureates and discussion panels with experts from across mathematics and computer science. And of course, more interactions between young researchers and all those amazing experts. So we hope you've enjoyed your first glimpse at the HLF this year. Come back on Wednesday for our video where we'll learn more about artificial intelligence and machine learning. See, See you, you later. later.